Is silver even going to do anything for you as a prepper? It's something that I've been thinking about a fair amount, and I wanted to talk through silver stacking from a preppers or disaster preparedness, survival, that sort of thing perspective. Um, there can be some upsides to silver, but there's also a lot of other things that I would think about first and other substitutes for silver that serve a similar purpose that might be better suited to your goals. So let me know what you think in the comments as I explain my position. My name is Christian. This is my channel, Treasure Town. Let's get into the video. All right, so in front of me, I have a bunch of different types of silver, and it's a fair amount. I mean, I could probably sell this and cover my expenses for at least um, a few months, you know, two, three months, maybe more if I'm being super frugal. But I'm sort of asking the question from the prepping perspective, you know, is there a best type of silver for the prepper? Um, you know, a lot of people are thinking, hey, I want to be ready for disaster, sort of um, prepared on a different axis than a lot of people. If things go south, we've had a long, long history, especially in the United States, of being in a good position, basically. There hasn't been too much uh, drastic events that have put a lot of Americans' life in danger um, from a, you know, like a big war perspective or a huge, you know, attack. You know, COVID certainly has... Um, caused a lot of deaths, but, um, you know, not like the types of situations that silver, you know, you wouldn't be trading silver because you're in COVID. Um, so I think a lot of people wonder, you know, what happens if the internet goes out or what happens if all of a sudden, you know, there's a big collapse of the infrastructure, you're sort of on your own, maybe silver is the right sort of thing to be stacking. And so I try to provide really balanced perspective. I think a lot of people, you know, are doom and gloom on the dollar it's going to go to nothing tomorrow you know you gotta buy silver with every penny that you have or buy a fair amount of it as long as it's at good prices you know with all the givens like yeah you have to buy it right that sort of thing i want to think about silver from the stacking perspective because really what it is is it's a store of value when you're viewing it from that um point of view and it's important to have other people who understand what the value of silver is and I think that that's one of the biggest problems with stacking silver from a prepping perspective because um, it's all valued in dollar terms so at one point you know it was like the the two main currencies that people would transact with was silver and gold and you'd want to have certain fineness of silver but right now everybody cares about silver and gold with respect to the US dollar or cash but i mean the whole world bases their money off of the u.s dollar um, practically you know that's not 100 percent true but a lot of governments you know have a lot of their money in u.s bonds you know u.s dollar bonds um in the u.s stock market in you know just usd because it might be more stable than some of the currencies of countries that don't have good uh, currency stability the point is people are focused on dollars nobody says or very few at least you know, it's not like I'm making $100,000 a year as a really good target. They're not saying, you know, I'm, I'm making 55 ounces of gold every year. Uh, that would be cool if they did, but the fact of the matter is it just doesn't happen. Um, so silver, uh, it's a traditional store, but, I mean, 1964 is when they really went off of it. Um, so, you know, or in, and by the late 60s, so-called. It's been 50 years since this stuff has been valued um, for sort of what it truly um, is and, and the purpose as money you know this tube of american silver eagles um you know has a face value of 20 bucks um i think the problem with the silver is again there's so many different types of silver that you know what what are you going to be able to sort of prove that it, it's what you're saying it is you know you want to stick to really basic things in the case um, that you're stacking something like these are really high premium right now and i don't think the probability of having a situation where you need to transact you know using i've got two right here the rolls of silver eagles warrants paying so much premium for it i also you know i have something like this Engelhard 10 ounce bar is like yeah you can't split this up it's not divisible you know then you look at something like a kilo silver bar even more in the other direction i think the right silver when you look at the premiums and this is what i mostly have is 90% um, silver that clearly is different. So uh, maybe Kennedy 1964s, but really the best, I don't have this on me because it's in my bank vault, 
which is probably not the best place to keep it if it's in a security situation, is like Franklin half dollars, Walking Liberty half dollars. I have a few lying around that I'm going to put in some grab bags that I'm sending out soon. Um, but, you know, this stuff trades at, fa at a multiple of face value. It's clearly silver. It's a much different design. It's United States... Um, so it's recognizable and it's old. So Franklin, same thing, 1963, it's a much different design and it clearly looks silver um, and it's 90%. So it's an obvious standard as opposed to some of the world standards. Um, and it's also, you know, I feel like I would be skeptical of, of getting paid in something like this because it might be easily faked or it'd be challenging to tell, you know, maybe you're transacting with somebody and they've just got nickel or silver plated nickel or something like that. Um, now, I think the better use would be to have a store of cash on hand because like i was saying people care about us dollar denominated things sure maybe the dollar goes way down in, in value um but in the situations that we're talking about uh, dollars are going to be much more recognized and widely used and you know very few people understand their true value it's a lot tougher to understand the true value of silver so you know, if I go out and ask people in public what's a, a pound of silver or an ounce of silver worth, they're not going to have any idea. Maybe one in a hundred. I also like gold a lot, and I think that this is truly the best sort of thing for stackers, along with a bunch of cash. Now, before you go around buying the the maybe a little bit of small denomination silver for small transactions, and then gold, and then stockpile cash, um, and I'll, I'll get into why I like the gold in a second. You want to have the things that are important for prepping, important for survival. It's not something that I'm really experienced with, but having some, you know, food, high calorie food rations that are easy to make, um, having a store of water, having a source of protecting yourself, of um, going and hunting and fishing, um, having things like shelter, maybe a, uh, you know, survival skills. Um, having something like a knife and then fire starting equipment, that's really what's important. Because think about it, if you have all the essentials and somebody comes along with a bunch of gold, you might give some of it away, but it's also a risk. I mean, carrying a bunch of gold in a truly sort of life or death scenario is also going to be a problem because it's a huge amount of tangible value, as will, you know, having a bunch of resources that are used for survival. So I don't think it's just like, oh man, you know, the government is in shambles and we're in a really bad situation. So thank God that I have my Asahi refining one kilo silver bar that's going to get me out of it. I think I'd much rather have all of the prepping tools and then have some gold, which, which is just a much higher tier um, and a much sort of clearer, like this is really valuable and would get you something. Even though the kilo silver bar is worth more than these coins, it's not something that I have a lot of um, sort of confidence in. I don't know if that makes sense, but like gold is really clear because it's like the gold standard. Silver, it's a different quantity and people really don't understand the value nearly as much as gold, U.S. dollars. Um, and certainly, again, in that prepping scenario, having something like uh you know, the, the prepping uh, materials. Now, I like this world gold. Um, sometimes on a percentage value basis, you're paying similar um, premiums for it versus like an $1,800 uh, ounce of gold round, but it's so much more um, able to be split up. And when you go to sell it, you know, you'll get solid value from a coin shop um, on gold, certainly probably compared to silver, but you also um, can sort of split it up, give it to the right people. And it's not so many coins where it's such a pain to sell it yourself. You can sell it to sell other people um, that are interested in owning gold um, and they're going to be happy to get, like, give them a really good deal on it. Maybe there's a few authenticity concerns, but um, this gold is, you know, not super easy to fake. Um, certainly not if you have an eye and have seen what the proper gold is looking like. This one's a restrike in the middle. This is like 180 bucks of gold, $170. Um, it's a nice coin, but it's not like a huge amount, um, you know, whereas buying some of this stuff, um, you can pay like 10 bucks and get something here. You're probably going to need to save up 200, 300 bucks before you can purchase something at a reasonably low premium. Like I think I paid two and a half percent over, um, for these 3% over. Um, 
but these are really nice. I'm going to go put them in the deposit box because I don't keep stuff like this on me. And I'm also going back to college soon. So I've been making a fair amount of videos. I'm going to be putting all this stuff back in the deposit box as well. Such is the reality of being a college student. You're not exactly the ideal prepping scenario. But yeah, if you have to buy silver, I would go with this stuff. I think it's fun to own silver. I own a fair amount, as you can tell, in front of me. But I think that it's important to be realistic about how you're doing it, especially with something like prepping. So let me know if you have any different opinions than me. Maybe it's a controversial opinion, but I think that it's pretty fair what I'm saying. So uh, I always try to say things that I, I believe in. And today, I think for the prepping scene, there's other reasons to buy silver. But for the prepping, I think you're better off going gold cash and then the actual things that you'll need to survive. Thanks for watching the video. I'd encourage you to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel to stay updated. I've also got Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, so you can follow me there. Um, TreasureTownYT.com is the main channel website. Definitely give that a visit. I've got a lot of information about me up there and the channel. Uh, CoinGrabBag.com as well currently redirects there, but it's some good opportunities for very fair grab bags, both made by me and other sellers. A lot of different options, so that's a good way to support. Um, there's also TreasureTownCoins.com. In the future, my coin dealing uh, operation will be done out of that website. Uh, CoinMeltPrice.com for updates on the melt prices of your coins, both U.S. and world a lot of resources in that website and then coins metals cards.com being developed right now as a marketplace and news source for coins metals cards and collectibles in general so i'll see you on my future videos looking forward to seeing you there and hope you have a good day